right, good. I am the Gamer Under Development, and this is Endless Space 2 Awakening. I hope you guys are as excited as I am. We're going to take a look at the Nakalim and then dive right in. I did change one game setting, but we'll get there in a minute. The Nakalim developed on a dry planet towards the end of the reign of the Endless. Their reverence for the Lost made them an enemy of the Endless, but the Endless were too wrapped up in their civil war to worry about the Nakalim. Once the Endless fell, they were largely alone in a tamed and civilized galaxy full of the Endless's infrastructure. As a result, they grew so rapidly that they overexpanded and the survivors were driven into hibernation to wait for their prophecy of the Lost to come to pass. Uh, they are the last empire. The Nakalim seek relics of their ancient glory, which brings them power and knowledge. They can collect relics. Unassigned relics produce science. They can assign relics to heroes for new skills or to empire for economic bonuses. They can create and interact with temple planetary specialization. Those are temples to the lost. Temples allow seeding adjacent systems to the academy in exchange for relics and a permanent tithe of income. Systems converted to the academy count as your systems for the purpose of conquest victory. And I think that last part is a symbol typo. It's meant to say that relics generate science on empire. Uh, the Nakalim population produce plus two happiness on planets with Temple to the Lost. So what that means is when you convert one of your planets to a Temple to the Lost, it'll actually generate a ton of happiness if there are Nakalim on it. We'll get there a little bit more once we get into the game, though. They start with Zermsala citizens. The Zermsala are a people both ancient and unfortunate. Bioengineers of the Concrete Endless discovered these dust-sensitive ungulates, and over time they altered the species to make them even more attuned to the presence and movement of dust. When the Dust Wars started, therefore, the Zermsala became critical to the war effort, and the Concretes exponentially increased their augmentation efforts. It was quite a success as the Zermsala abetted the Endless Pogrom that led to the destruction of the Lost. Pogrom. After the Lost fell, they evolved on their own, but it was not long before they were discovered by the expanding empire of the Nakalim. Appreciating their skills, the Nakalim adopted the Zermasala for a different reason, to seek out, against all hope, any Lost that may remain alive in the galaxy. They produce plus two industry on fertiles and plus one dust. They also generate religious output. Very good. Uh, forgotten Lore. As a previously powerful empire in decline, the faction has a great deal of scientific knowledge already mastered. Begin with the first two tiers of technology unlocked. This is huge, guys. This is huge. Because normally, when you pick another faction, you're playing the game and what you're trying to do is you're trying to add tools that fit your faction to your toolbox so you can do more things. With the Nakalim, you start with a giant toolbox. And instead of it being about collecting the tools you need, it's about choosing the right tool for the job at the hand. So that'll actually teach you a lot, in my opinion, about specializing systems and stuff like that. But we'll get into that more when we're in the game. Beliefs, not breakthroughs. Rituals over research. Planets do not generate science. All scientific improvements are 50% less effective. Cannot obtain technology from other empires. Except by hacking, I believe. It was like that in the beta, or rather in the VIP build. I don't know if it's going to be like that in the launch build. We'll find out. Set science to zero on planets. Minus 50% science on systems. That is our negative right there, is that our science generation is very, very limited, especially early on, which is why hacking is such an important thing for us. Uh, and then Content Citizens 1, minus 25% expansion disapproval on systems. The citizens of the Empire are easily content with their life, and lack of space doesn't really bother them. Sobra is our starting planet. Let's go ahead and read that description. The Nakalim have been on Sobra since their birth, and though it is heavily exploited, they still view it as a gracious and civilized home. A more interesting fact is that the planet was once protected by a lost, also called Sobra by the Nakalim, who guided and aided them over the long, slow growth of their culture. They feel the loss of their god to the weapons of the Endless keenly, and are dedicated enemies of that dead civilization. From Sobra, they once built an empire that controlled much of the galaxy, and they are eager to rebuild it. Uh, we do start as a republic, which is awesome. We also start as religious, which is also awesome in a lot of ways. Recitation class, that is our colonization hole. We have the salutation class, which is our exploration vessel. The incantation class, which is our attack vessel. The inv invitatory class, <laughs> invitatory class, which is our support vessel. The prostration class, which is our larger attack vessel, sort of our medium attack vessel. The psalm class is our medium defensive vessel. The Invocation class is our carrier, and then of course we have behemoths just like everybody else does. Alright, so we're going to select them for sure. So I'm using normal settings here. Game difficulty is set to hard, so that's a little bit higher than normal. I didn't want to go too high though, because the goal of this playthrough is to show you how the knock and play, not to prove that I'm a pro player, because I'm not, honestly. Um, I 
when I played in in testing though, I played on I believe Impossible, and it was still very very playable. So I, your mileage may vary, but it also depends on how comfortable you are with them. The one change I did make so that we could show some of their gameplay mechanics is I changed the minor civilization quantity to high because having them more prolific helps us be able to show the uh, temple conversion mechanic a little bit easier. All right, let's dive in. We've got Sofon's United Empire, Kraver's Riftborn, Lumeris, Spiral 6, Medium Galaxy Size, let's go. I am so excited. I want to tell you guys a secret. I haven't actually watched this intro video until now because the, the VIP build that I was able to test did not have their actual intro video in. So I'm going to be watching this for the first time with y'all. So don't mind me if I pop a little bit. I'm, I'm super excited to see this. Ooh, and they have doggos. They have doggos. Space doggos. Uh, space doggos for the win. Okay. Okay. Come on. You can show me the video. Okay, so basically what we just saw there was Isander, the, uh, I, I should know the name, the Lumeris hero and the hero for the United Empire. They just came in and woke up the Nakalim. That's why it's called Awakening. Oh, I'm so excited, guys. I'm sorry. I'm just super, super excited. That was so cool. So that was what Isander was doing. That was his goal, was to wake the Nakalim who were supposed to bring back the Lost, I'm guess. I'm guessing that's freaking amazing. Okay. Sorry, nerding out, done. Relics have been detected. The galaxy that you once ruled was rich with relics of knowledge from your ancient sides. Zermasala advisors have whispered that they sense new relics out there somewhere. Uh, okay, so we start here on Karana. Let's see what our starting system looks like. Ooh, it's not pretty right now. We have a couple of anomalies that one of them's negative, one of them's positive, but we have no strategic resources for our starting system. That's going to be somewhat annoying because we do actually have the ability to gather them right off the bat. Uh, so what we're going to do here to start with, because this is what you generally want to do pretty much every game when you start with most factions, we're going to put drone networks in queue and we're going to come make a colony ship real quick. Uh, so our colony ship will be obviously the colonizer hull. We're just going to throw a couple engines on there. You'll notice that we already have access to the sieging module. We already have access to Hyperium engines. Uh, we have access to a lot of things very, very early, but we're just going to make a colony ship here and that will allow us to throw that in queue so that we can grab our next planet as soon as possible. The other thing we're going to do that's a little bit different from most other factions is we're going to come in here and, well, I mean, other factions do this, but they do it for a different reason. We're going to build a Relic Hunter. Now, the Relic Hunter is going to be another colonizer with just engines. You don't need anything special to harvest relics, so this is the fastest ship we can build right off the bat that will let us go harvest relics. If we use one of our other holes, we won't have three support slots, we'll only have two, which is why we're using the colonizer hole for that. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and probably put Cerebro in after that, and then colonize our second planet. I think that's a good start off for us. Moria Kupas has joined your empire. This is our new hero. Uh, I'm gonna go take a look at his bio here. If we can, here we go. 
It is unlikely there is a living Nakalim who has not heard of Kupas, perhaps the oldest living Nakalim. Her role as warrior for the Church of Sobra has kept her going through generations of exploration, the discovery of relics of the lost and the endless. In broadcasts, archaeological digs, and battlefields, she carries her faith like a weapon. For centuries, her heart has burned with the injustice and outrage of the day of the blasphemy, the day that the lost were first drawn to the lodestone and butchered. A fearless, driven, stressful superior officer, she will not stop until the lost return. Raw! We like her. She's cool. And she's also a seeker. Um, so we're going to go ahead and probably work her towards seeker stuff unless... No, we'll work her towards seeker stuff. We'll, we'll make her a fleet commander. That's actually probably the most beneficial thing for us. Uh, she'll also be able to increase fleet speed. And actually, while we're in here, we should be looking at this. All of that is outdated. Everything on our ship that we start with is outdated because we have access to a ton more techs. One of the things I like to do with the Nokalim starting off is I like to go heavy projectiles with them because they start with swarm missiles, which basically get rid of flak. Very, very strong, guys. Very, very strong. If we had Hyperium here, I might consider an H-Field Accelerator, but we do not. So I'm going to go ahead and throw an engine and a couple probes on. Actually, I'm going to do two engines and a probe. That'll allow her to join one of our currently running fleets and do some scanning, which will give her a few early level ups, which will be useful. One of our faction quests, I believe, will require her to be level five and govern a st uh, system, so we want to get levels on her as quickly as possible. Also, getting science early with the Nokalim is a very, very good idea. And there's a reason for that. Since we start with all these technologies, the faster we can build system improvements, the more we can take advantage of our early game. So we really do want to be able to get into science kind of early. Uh, while we're at it, let's take a look at this. We have one relic available. Relics are found and excavated from systems. Unassigned relics will automatically increase your total science production. While assigned, relics can be used to grant new skills to heroes or boost system production. Now, if we go into our science generation here and we mouse over, we can see we're getting plus 50 from relics. So that's 50 for one relic and then plus five from our science from our system because it produces basically nothing. You'll, you'll see here that we're generating five science overall, and uh, that is because we would get 10 from our Galactic HQ, and that gets halved. So our science generation on system, not a very big thing. Uh, getting infinite supermarkets here early is probably a good idea because we're just under content. We have found a neighboring special node. It's not a great one, but it's not a terrible one. The additional influence there is actually really nice. It means that if we get enough influence to get out here, it'll boost our influence even more which helps us spread that sphere of influence, which is important for that whole passing systems over to the academy thing. Your empire now has access to Eden Incense. Excellent. Let's go take a look at what our population booster is. That's going to be very important. Red Sang. Okay, I can live with that. Red Sang is usually pretty available, is a good way to put that. Um, all right. So, hey, new luxury resource, Red Sang. <laughs> but that's just because it's ours. have ruled this empire since its inception. Worshippers of the lost, they flourished under the benevolent guidance of the one they called Sobra, who formed a loose Dyson structure around their planet. The murder of their god by the endless, however, followed by scarcity and decline, drove them into a period hibernation. Awakened now, as their prophecies foretold, they are ready to reach out into the galaxy, rediscover their ancient temples and relics, and retake all that was once theirs. All that will be yours. Excellent. Sorry, I wanted to wait for the narration to, to continue there. I've gotten comments in the past about talking over stuff like that. Uh, all right, we're going to send this fleet this way, and then we'll grab our other fleet that's here and send them off the other direction. The hope here is to find a second habitable system very, very soon. As far as research goes, we have a couple of different options, and we should definitely look at Karana before we make a decision. So this toxic planet has our anomalies on it. Anomalies are going to be very important. We also have an anomaly on this steps that we can already colonize because we have the tech. Karana we can already colonize. So we have one system that will be uncolonizable until we research a technology. As you can see, all of our tier one and two tech is already researched. Such a beautiful thing. 
Uh, that being said, since we only have one system that's unavailable without researching new colonization techs, we're not going to focus on that. Generally, I would say early on you have three major options to consider as the Nocolin. One is autonomous materials here. That'll give you an extra hacking operation and increase your hacking speed. We already start off with the accelerator, which makes hacking a little bit easier. In the mid game, hacking becomes a very effective way to keep our science in line with everyone else because we can just hack them and steal their techs. Uh, so that is basically my preferred number one go to. If you find that you have a lot of lava planets on your starting system and you're not able to colonize them, then going for colonized lava as your first tech is also a really strong option. And then last but not least, I would say the the other strong option you can go for is this culture center right here because it will increase the amount of influence you generate quite a bit as time goes on. Since we do start out with access to our first empire improvement or empire system development. So those are kind of the three options. I think in this case, we're definitely going to start with hacking and then we'll probably go from there. As you can see, it's going to take 40 turns right now for us to get that. So that is our drawback. It takes us time to get that science. It won't actually take us 40 turns though, guys. I, I promise you that it won't actually take us 40 turns. We'll find some relics. We'll get some things moving. That'll be a good way to boost that. Oh, lovely. Bushir is our next system because it has both of these starting strategics. It is only three planets, which is kind of sad, but we'll be we'll be fine. We'll make do with that. Uh, how long before these are? I don't want to wait another turn. I'm gonna keep going here. Actually, let's let's consider that. Sorry about the loud truck that just drove by as well. Uh, yeah, we'll keep going here. We can always come back to Osulu and do some more scanning there. We're definitely gonna scan Bushir here. Bushir has a Oh, that's beautiful. Two ash planets and a forest. This will be a great production system for us early on. And it's got Adamantian. This system is really nice, actually. I'm, I'm very happy with Bushir. Minus the fact that it's got a limited number of planets on it. It's a very, very strong system. Okay, come on. Click the star lane. You can do it. Oh, finicky star lanes. There we go. Okay, so that star lane is clicked on and we'll be moving down it. Your analysis of Bashir ret uh, returned a couple Adamantian to start with, which is great. Oi, I would really, really like to find some more relics. Right now, we haven't seen a single one. That's kind of painful. Hopefully, we discover a miner as well very soon. Hey, faction quest is up. A proud past. I have not only lived through a prophecy, I have opened my eyes in wonder and seen it happen before me. This is my story. I am Maruzia of the Royal Mapagna family, Princess of the Nakalin. Our sleep was one of desperation. When Sobra was taken from us, when the Endless destroyed the gods, our civilization fell into decline. Centuries of growth and exploration descended into ruin and confusion in a matter of years. Our vast galactic empire crumbled until the Nakalim, at risk of chaos and collapse, were driven into hibernation. Many were almost glad to do it, for a prophecy said this, The sleep of the faithful will be long, and the galaxy will change, and the stars shift in their places. Yet in the end, when the time of the rebirth is near, the faithful shall be awakened by a prophet. There is more to it as it was a prophecy and they often go on like that. Little did we imagine that this prophet would come with tales not only of the treachery of the Endless as if we did not know, but of a great tabernacle built to assuage the, their guilt and to beg the lost for forgiveness, and of a new and glorious purpose for him and his followers, most call it simply the Academy. But he whispered to us its full name, the Ultimate Academy of Truth and Repentance. Now we are awake and alive, a reinvigorated people filled with a sense of purpose, but though I am glad to feel the sun upon my face once more, my first act will be to lay my parents to rest, for the long hibernation was too much for their aging bodies. So my story begins at a time of wonder and prophecy and loss. This is my story. I am Maruzia of the Royal Mapagna family, and it seems that I am queen of the Nakalin. Oh, I love it. Okay. So Rise Up is what we're going to go after more than likely. Uh, the reason we're going to go after Rise Up is because investigating curiosity is something we want to do anyway, since we're trying to transition into science to take advantage of our access to improvements. However, it's also good because we want to build religion so that eventually that will overtake our science. Ecologist is good. Ecologist can basically save you from having to uh, get expensive colonization techs, but as we've already discussed, for the most part, those can wait a little bit later. Now, on the other hand, if we'd had like three lava planets in our starting system, I probably would have pushed for Ecologist here. Okay, so we got that. We're building our first colony ship, which is great because it's going to head straight to Bushir. Come on, show me the relics. Why do I see no relics yet? 
Stop, stop with this. Give me my relics. Um, all right. So after Cerebral Reality, let's see how much it would take, not for a colony ship, but for a relic hunter to, to get out. Eh, it's going to take a hot second. Actually, it'd be one turn right here. So that may be worth it in and of itself. I think it is. We're going to do that. We're absolutely going to do that. Uh, we need a relic hunter out quickly to start scouting for relics. We obviously would have liked to have found more already. Ooh, look at Bonnie, though. Bonnie's a system. Bonnie is a very nice system. I like Bonnie. Let's see what's up with Bonnie. Okay, Bonnie, what do you got for me? Uh, three colonizable planets to start with. Luxury resources times two on one of them. Lots and lots of anomalies. This is going to be a nice system for us. It is a little science focused, but that's okay. We can always tribute one of the systems as a temple to the lost, and that'll be fine. Rich soil is good. Going to build us a lot of population there quickly. Uh, the question is, do we want to go for Bonnie before Bushir? And I think the answer is no. Bushir giving us strategic resources that we need to build early wonders makes it a better system to go for right away, I feel like. Uh, unfortunately, that does look like we've reached the end of this branch in our constellation. If we zoom out, can we see our constellation bonus? Is dust. Okay. So, yeah. That's that's rough. Uh, I think I'm going to leave this ship here for a moment so that we can get some more probes and do stuff with that. But in the meantime, we should have our first colony ship popping out right now, which will be headed over to Bashir. Oh, and I forgot our law on turn... I forgot our law a couple of turns ago. Wow, that was a huge, huge error on my part. Let's go ahead and grab Species Stability, and if we can afford it without going negative, and we can, we'll get Green Fertility Bill as well, although let's see if we actually have any anomalies. So that was a big mistake on my part. We actually could have used that early dust bonus to make it easier to colonize quicker, but it won't kill us here. I, I got so excited with everything that I missed it, guys. That's There's no, no excuse for it. I just missed it. Uh, let's go ahead and get some more free movement here. That'll help us out. Free movement going to be very important for us because we start with access to free movement so we can go off of our star lanes very early here. Relic Hunter is in progress. It'll be done within a turn. And then this guy right here is still waiting for probes. That's fine. Move along. Show me something good. Skiagosia. Awesome. Oh, look at that system, guys. Look at that system. No, no, not you. Oh, well. I have completely bungled. I have completely bungled in my excitement, but yes, Skiagoja is awesome. We're going to be there in just a second. It's okay. Honestly, with these early ships, the goal is just to scan down anomalies, so we're not hurting that bad by accidentally misclicking there. Oh, that is a, a very bad look, though, isn't it? Okay. Relic Hunter here, Cerebral Reality as well. Whoop. Let's go ahead and get this system colonized. Bushir is going to be great. We're going to start here on this forest, for obvious reasons, has the most food, has good production, also has the deposits that we'd like, and we will spend 150 dust to shorten the time that it takes to colonize that. So, okay, not having the, the dust law enacted was not a great thing, but it also didn't hurt us that much. Okay, let's go to Kamos here and start scanning. Hey, even more resources. So Kamos here is going to be a great second system for us. We have so many options now, because Bonnie is also a great system. Um, hmm. I'm almost tempted to separate our hero out here and leave this ship here to make sure pirates don't spawn there, because they do spawn on turn 10, I believe. Yeah, let's do that. Basically, we're going to try to prevent pirates from spawning there. We're probably going to get pirates right here on Osulo the way that it's looking right now. However, we do have this Relic Hunter ready to go, and they've got 12 movements, so we can really, really get going with them. Uh, for example, it'll take them three turns to get down that long star lane, which is frustrating, but sure. Let's send him over there for right now. I can't believe we haven't seen another relic before. This is actually the longest I've gone, or yet. This is the longest I've gone without seeing a relic. Uh, gonna zoom out, take a look at the galaxy shape, and maybe fire off a couple probes. Let's go that way and that way for right now. And hopefully that will allow us... Oh, wait a minute. There isn't... That's right. We're just hanging here to keep the pirates from spawning. Piranha is gonna be working on getting their second planet now because they were reaching the cap on the first one. Hey, we discovered a nebula that gives dust. That's awesome. And we discovered a relic. That's what that is. That little light thing right there, that is a relic. We're going to go get it. Uh, not with that guy, though. It's going to take him way too long to get there. This is what our relic hunters are made for. There we go. Relic hunter, do your job. So we're working on colonizing a steps. After that, we are doing infinite supermarkets here to keep our happiness up. 
We get a little bit more happiness. It'll boost our influence gain or generation, which is very, very useful for us. I also think we may just pick that up early. Hmm. Now, I think after this, we're going to focus on our production gains. We will have a temperate after this, so it's going to give us even more bonus when we produce this. We do not, unfortunately, benefit from interplanetary transport network here at all right now because we don't have any strategic resources. And the fact that we have no anomalies left means we probably aren't going to have those things. Very unfortunate there. Food is going to be our next focus, though, and we do have a hot here. So if we get sustainables, we'll get 10 more food and then an additional 5 for that hot. Epigenetics will just give us two food per population, which is six right now. That's still probably going to be even more. And then this one will actually be even better, I feel like, although we only have one luxury deposit, so that's still not great. Yeah, I think we'll do sustainable after that. We can do public-private partnerships at any point, but it's just not very useful to us right away early on. Uh, on the other hand, you know, tourism here will be very useful for us to generate some extra dust. So we're going to get those improvements and then go for the infinite supermarket, I think. And somewhere in there, actually, we should see how long this is going to take. Five more turns until that colonizes, so we're going to want to have another colony ship in there that finishes maybe two turns before that. So probably right after we get Karana. Why, hello there, Kuyos. Kuyos is another great system that we can potentially colonize. So at least we have a lot of nice four-planet systems nearby. I think that's going to work out fairly well for us. Let's go ahead and just leave these guys here for a moment. We can always use their probes next turn to, to get a better view of what's going on. Neutral hackers are active. Awesome. Uh, so they should actually be appearing relatively soon. And the academy has been found by some empire already. Oof. Two turns. Will you guys make it to... Bonnie in two turns. They will. Hopefully they arrive before the pirates spawn, because we'd really like to get Bonnie. Bonnie is a big system with some great luxury resources. Uh, Kamos, also a great system. Man, the concentration of luxury resources is off the hook right now. Uh, so we look at Kuyos here. We've got a couple lava. Well, we've got a lava. We've got an ash, an arid, and an arid. Okay, so once again, great system for us. Lava being the only one we cannot actively colonize. And it has Red Sang. Okay, so we're going to want to get this system very early so that we can boost our pop. And that was the dryer alarm. Sorry about that, everybody. Okay, Red Sang popping. Here we go. Oh, do we want to move or do we want to stay here on Kuyus? We can't stay everywhere. We can't stay everywhere, and actually destroying pirates is not very hard for us because we start with a huge technological advancement over them. Let's just go ahead. We're not going to worry about pirates as much as we were. Uh, as soon as we hit 10 on here, we're probably going to go after the Endless Research and Park what or whatnot. The power of the Academy has reached level 2. Heroes will start at this level when recruited. Okay, colonize steps. Colony ship is going to be done here very, very quickly. Ecologists are actually leading in the, the election. In the name of the four Why, hello there, Lumeris. Where are you at so that we can start stealing your technologies? Uh, we don't know. We don't know where you're at. Okay. Interesting. I'm going to rest that unit there for a minute to get some more probes. <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. My throat got all cray for a minute. Going to grab those relics. And let's see. Oh, Kuyos got pirates. Okay, that's okay. They didn't spawn in Osulo, which is what I was more worried about, to be honest. Uh, and Oentho, we now have a probe to be able to scan with. What do you guys got here? So it is an Atoll, Gas Warm, Gas Hot, Steps. Couple planets here that we can't really colonize right off the bat. This is not <clears throat> an ideal system for that reason. So instead, we're going to shoot a probe down that way and then come down this way. Do -do -do, do -do -do -do. Okay, so Bonnie here, we're going to go ahead and do a scan down. What else do we potentially want here? Those ice planets being inhospitable is not a great thing for this system in general. Ooh, but we do have antimatter here, which is great. And we've completed our faction quest. At least the first stage of it. Had I known that the galaxy was so rich, I would have awakened sooner. The wonders, the glories, the risks, the challenges. I am more than awake. I vibrate with hope and passion. The future may be unsure, but I would not have it any other way. So we got 60 super spuds for that. Not exactly the most useful thing for us to acquire right now. 
Assign a hero of at least level 5 to Bushir. Give the con uh, complainers what they want. Oh. Seems the Nakalim are grumpy when awakened from hibernation. Some fear we are exploring too far too fast. They would like to see more of our ancient rituals and traditions respected and remembered. They would like more reassurance and less action and movement. Fine, I will give them a leader to follow and see that this leader is successful, but I will not slow my drive to bring glory back to my empire. Give the complainers what they want. A local leader to hold their hands and listen to their objections. <laughs> That's great. I love that. The Vault of Governance has been unlocked. That'll increase uh, hero experience gains by 50%. That's awesome. Okay. And we also got Antimatter found here. That's perfect. Let's go ahead and check on what's going on with the rest of our fleets. Probably good to continue scanning down Oentho here with this ship. We're going to bring them over to Oentho. They're probably going to have to pass through the pirate system. That could be kind of problematic. However, I'm not super worried about it. And I really want Scavenge Ram Scoops right now. Scavenge Ram Scoops would be great for us at the moment. We'll have another colony ship out in one turn, which ironically should be when we finish colonizing here. So that's perfect. Um, and then we'll send that ship up to Kamos probably and start gathering resources in Kamos. And our relic gathering ship is almost done collecting that relic. Oh, hacking operations are left. That's right. We have a hacking target now. Uh, so it's going to take us quite a while to get to that hacking target. However, it's actually beneficial for us not to clear them out right away because if we get a back door here and there is a neighboring system belonging to one of our rivals, we can go ahead and use that to establish more back doors. Basically, what we want to do with our hacking is we want to ladder our way into a system adjacent to one of their capitals. Looks like a minor faction up here. We can see that little bit of an influence outline right there as well. Uh, so we are going to fire a probe up that way to find them and another one right there to hopefully find whoever is up that way and we'll start traveling up that path okay so that should get those things done honestly thinking i might build us another relic hunter right here as well although we should probably wait until after xeno industrials here yeah i think getting xeno industrials here is going to be more important um and then we should start looking at one of our systems here to potentially tribute to the lost but I'm not sure which one it's going to be. And the reason for that is once we create a temple to the lost, we can actually start putting resources into these empire improvements. Uh, but that'll be on the next episode. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure to go ahead and give us a like or subscribe to the channel. And we will see you next time. Bye!